Get him out. <laughs> Get him out, Sharon. Hello and welcome <laughs> to Talk Scottish Football. Today I am joined by... That's a horrible intro, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but we'll just roll with it now because it's, 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 we're going now. I'm not letting you edit this out. We are continuing. Right, okay, right, welcome okay. to Talk Scottish Football, episode number... Every time we do this, and it's just irrelevant. It's just another episode. It's another right? episode. When we get to 100, it'll become relevant again. That is indeed. Joined by David Buick. He's yeah. in the house. I'm, in the, I'm not in the house, I'm in the studio. <laughs> oh, yeah, I hate myself too. Fucked up. And Adam's here as well. Adam Kennedy's here as well. This made, is a dreadful intro. Made the journey, we'll start again. Yeah. How the fuck do you want me to intro it? But I don't like, I don't like <laughs> intro on podcasts. I don't know what you say. I don't like to either. I'm not. Hey. Hello and welcome. <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> we have to put the books in. You've got to compare the two now. All right, people, what's oh happening? Welcome God. to Talk Scottish Football. Today, we are joined by myself, David Buick, and oh. Adam Kennedy. We'll go to Adam first, made the journey all the way up from Ayrshire, the sunny Ayrshire. Indeed, How are mate. you, mate? I'm, I'm very well. How are you? I'm all right, aye. No. See, I never know what to say to that. See, when I ask somebody, how are you? I'm not, I never expect it back, and I'm just like, aye, mate. It's like when you bump into somebody in the street you've not seen in years. What mm-hmm. you been up to? Nothing. Nothing much. <laughs> it's always nothing, in yeah, it? And yeah. you've not seen them in about five years. We're also joined by David Buick. Are you, are I'm are right, you sharing? Yeah, I'm good. Are you actually all right, I'm aye? Yeah, I'm, I'm all right. Good. Not Nothing better than all right. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not going to just, uh, let's just move on. Yeah, let's move on. Of course, we're sitting in here in the G4 podcast studio space. It's absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, it, is, it is just superb. Um, yeah. I was watching that again. I was just going through YouTube last night and an uh, old show came up and I suggested and I just switched it on and it just never fails to make me laugh to think we were in our fucking living room. I know. Doing this. And now, look at us now. Look it's at came us now. a long way, hasn't it? Who'd have thought? Well, yeah. and bounds. That's what it's all about, yeah. isn't it? We yeah. must also say we're buttoning up our ideals this week, aren't we? We've got the podcast today, the review show. Yes. We're doing a preview for the scotland Israel game, the big one, and then a live match reaction for the game after Israel, uh, after Israel as well. So we're hoping we get a result for that. But we'll button our ideas up because we, right. we uploaded on Saturday. Do you want to tell us how that happened, David? Because um, it's well, I mean, it was quite a shit show to be fair. To do with me. I mean, no. Ryan came here to do the podcast on Friday morning. Yep. And I don't think he went. He got home until Sunday night. He was just out all weekend. He left here straight into the town. Get fucking tanked up and booze and then firewater. He was trying to upload it on their Wi-Fi. It wasn't happening. Yeah. And then. I don't even know what happened after that. I think it went up the Saturday eventually. Yeah. So I mean, who's get, watching that? Do you know what uh, McGinley and Ryan says in her? Dundee that? are going to beat St Johnston. That's that was their that Christ. was their hot take. Christ. What what is McGinley all about with this Dundee hype? Oh, he's coming know. for McGinley. No, 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 no. no, no, no I just around. mean you know I can't get his top six idea out my head. See, to be fair though, see, he, he just loves just Dundee. Love he loves Dundee, the screwballs. Pre-season, I thought they would do all right. Actually, I thought they'd do better than they have done. I'm, I'm, I, I didn't. I just thought. Well, the main reason I thought that is because see, towards the end of the last season, they really came onto a game of the championship and looked like a decent side. And obviously, yeah, but did they strengthen enough? Maybe, probably not. I mean, they brought in not Griffiths defensively. For yeah, me. And and that's that's a bit exactly. And the championship, they obviously conceded a lot of goals, scored a lot of goals, so we, they would need to kind of shoot up at the back. That's where I thought that that would be their uh, Achilles heel. And then yeah, the weekend there was uh, St Johnston three, Dundee one. Oh, is that where we're starting? We may as well. We're already talking about it. Yeah, let's do it. So we'll fly through that. Uh, St Johnston, very good victory for them. Eh? Yes, very good. And uh, the the start of the season, I was very worried about them. I, think I said that a lot, but um, they've they found a little bit of a little bit of form recently. Obviously, in the semi final cup as well coming up soon. Um, but yeah, not not good for Dundee at all. Mm-hmm. I I think that if you're if you're talking about like the Premiership sack race, I think James McPake would probably be there. Yeah, because it, even though he got he promoted at, last season, there was how he even got that clinging. far at Dundee. Yeah, I have no yeah. idea. Like in his first season, he was getting hammered in the derby. They were sitting like fourth or fifth, and I, I couldn't believe he kept his job. Then, mm-hmm. then he got them promoted. Fair enough, but you had to get Dundee promoted in two seasons of the championship. You've got to get Dundee promoted, and, and I think now that they're not doing so well in the Premiership, a lot of Dundee fans that had maybe got back on side with him last season will start to remember a lot of the stuff in early on in his tenure, and I think that'll result in him going very early, especially if they don't start winning games. Yeah, in his post match, he basically just came out and says it was ridiculous. The goals that we conceded, do you know what I mean? He never broke it down any further. Uh, Cam Davidson went with two up top in this game. Went with Stevie May, went with Chris Kane. I just feel like Chris Kane over the last few years, the progression of his game... That's got to be Kane! Exactly. He's <laughs> yeah. just, he's went to another stratosphere, Adam Hinty. First goal, 
I was going to say finish for him and the second you know instinctive getting an area gets a goal and I'm quite surprised that it's taken as long for him to bag in the league he's obviously scored I think his last goal was in Austria wasn't it in the in the Europa qualifying and whatnot mm. or the conference whatever it was um, so yeah off the mark in the league both the, he and Stevie May getting on the score sheet is very pleasing indeed but yeah. I think James McPake's absolutely spot on there was, there was one of the goals where Wotherspoon plays the ball through not a single Dundee player looking to press close down who I believe to be their main man and then when you've got Michael Halloran's pace which looked a constant threat as well with those two as well in the yeah. equation I think it was only a matter of time really I really fancied St Johnston but I didn't I didn't see it to be that as fact, routine did he, yeah. did he whip out the spoony chop at the weekend did you see that Probably. against Dundee obviously St Johnston fans he loves a, he loves a crowd down David Wallerspoon and when they played Dundee at Dens in the cup there was this clip and it was him up against Paul McGowan on the left hand side and he put six or seven Cruyff towns just <laughs> rinsed him inside out constantly what a player he is by the way um, yeah I mean uh, th- it's going to be interesting now St John's are going to be ex- they'll go into them cup semi-finals that cup semi-final really like thinking they can go and win which is bizarre yeah they've got to because they're going to have that confidence from last season and all of a sudden they've gone from having a shaky start to the season to there's lots to be positive about and mentioning there like guys like Michael Haller and Chris Kane Stevie May Callum Davidson's done wonder for those guys to get them all three consistently playing at a good level yeah. and get them scoring goals as well which is something that Stevie May recently struggled with Chris Kane was never that prolific and now they're, they're, they're both chipping him with goals which is good so good result for them but I think Dundee are in a bit of trouble yeah, indeed. Like if if you look at the other games Dundee have played in, they've they've been pretty competitive out with the game uh, Celtic Park. Obviously played Rangers at home, very competitive. Probably should have got something out of the game, but this one just too easy. And if they if they're going to get anywhere, I think in the league they need to they need to really show that up. They're very workmanlike, aren't they? They've got lots of guys who've been around and can work hard, but and they're very dogged as well. Like I mean. Paul McGowan's still playing Premiership football in 2021. Fair play to him. But, um, Fair play to the lad. Yeah. That, that, I mean, his Premiership career is hanging on better than his hair is, which is, you know, something. Um, they're lacking quality, though, aren't they, at the top end? And everyone thought Griffiths would be the answer. Um, if you're having a competition but who can click, kick flares the farthest in, you're winning. But, um, yeah, he needs to start kicking the ball in the net, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. I think Charlie Adam coming back into the equation will be massive for Dundee as well. Yeah, I think so. Um, but, but defensively, still, yeah, they're at sixes got, and sevens. Also, yeah, exactly. So, so it doesn't even matter... You, you know, there's only so much that Charlie Adam and their offensive players but can also, do. But also, he didn't even he didn't even goals. play that much towards the end of the season last year in the championship. He got no. dropped. You know, I mean, he's no, not fit enough true. playing in midfield too yeah. in the championship. He's, they're going to have to play three across the middle to get him in the midfield in the Premiership. He will have quality though, and that's the thing. Especially if you've got like, I mean, Lee Ashcroft scored loads of goals last season for Dundee. Set pieces can be a massive thing for them. Um, that was so, the thing yeah. that stood out to me versus Kilmarnock, obviously. When they played them the, to get yeah, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. they just Playoffs. absolutely annihilated them with set pieces and they looked really strong at that. So I think they just need to get back to their, their basics and their strengths and start this, this trying to get is, some is, points on the board. It's quickly. very much just scrape to stay in the league as much mm-hmm. as possible. And if they can do that, it's a good season for Dundee. Yeah, absolutely. 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 Where should we go next, Adam, then? We'll, we'll only float yourself then, mate. We've got to go, we've got to go to the high bees. <laughs> We'll leave, the, we'll, leave the jam till, we'll leave the best till last. Yeah, top of the Love table clash, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, at Ibrox, Rangers 2. Hibs one have started the game really, really well. Get an, an early opener a from, from your man Kevin Nisbet. A player. I'm, I'm, that, I'm like did a proud, that just to the I'm like a proud father. It did actually. It just made me think I can't believe he actually played for us. And people laughed at me when I said he was good enough to play in the Premiership yeah. for Scotland. It, it was a really good header. Um, Bonner Barisic header. could should probably shut down Chris Cadden a lot quicker. Um, Great but, cross though. Yeah, it was, and I think it was an underrated finish and an underrated goal as well because he peels off Lundstrom, who comes in to take him. Golden starts blaming Lundstrom. I think and back Golson across the should, keeper. Yeah, absolutely. Golson Definitely. should go and. Uh, be the commanding centre half in that, that position and go and win the ball but uh, to give Nisbet some credit he does peel off the movement's good and the finish is even better mm-hmm. and I was sitting in the stadium thinking to myself it's an absolute international war crime that either Rangers or Celta haven't went and got yeah, him and the, so when you look at some of this like look at Rangers for example signing uh, Cedric Eaton for two and a half three million you could go and get Kevin Nisbet for four million in the summer there and he comes in and he's, he's going to score your goals and I just don't understand that. I, I, I really don't. But uh, Jack Ross will be happy with the fact he still get Kevin Nisbet and he books you no beef for the sell on fee. I, I tell you really now though, if you get to January and Celtic or Rangers, Celtic or Rangers are struggling for goals, then yeah. we'll go for him because it'll get to the point where it's like, well, this guy's sitting right there. He will score goals for either. And you would imagine Celtic would probably be the team. 
Yeah, Christian he, has, he, he would. Yeah, he, if he was at Celtic yeah. this summer, he'd have played pretty much every game so far this season. Yeah, because he's, he's, he's struggling for Celtic fans anyway. as well, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it makes sense. But and he's I, gagging on the move he's, as he's well. He's not the type mm. that would. He's not the type that would care about that. I wouldn't stop him going to Rangers. No, he's too focused no. on his career. I think he's you too ambitious. Yeah, I think yeah. once you're in the game, not mean it becomes your job. So, some guys, though, some guys have still got that wee guy mentality. But they're like, oh, I'm a Celtic man. I can't play for Rangers. But he wouldn't give a shit. I don't think he's just all business. No, Hibs were really good. Scott Allen started in the game as well but we'll come on to the a defining moment in the well, game see, then. see just from your point of view being at the game at 1-0 Hibs did you think Christ would have been for a long afternoon here seriously 1-0 Hibs I thought something needs to change um, a change like honestly I thought Rangers need to make a substitution here because Hibs were, were pretty comfortable uh, Rangers had some good possession and they had a couple of opportunities but Hibs looked comfortable Scott Allen looked good in the ball when he got it um, they were getting set pieces in dangerous positions I thought they could maybe go and get a second goal here if, if, if the, the ball and breaks that, down that to them start was kind of the story of Rangers season so it far it was and I genuinely thought we need to we need to change something here um, either take off Glenn Kamara and bring on somebody a wee bit more attacking uh, or even bring off Nathan Patterson at that point and bring on your captain Tav who was obviously on the bench which was a talking point I don't know what has happened there I've not seen anything in regards to whether uh, Tav was injured there was a point in the second half where he was coming on the park Rangers scored the second and then he got totally sat down and he wasn't even warming up so I think it was maybe a wee injury do you at think, that point do you think, just before we come on to the big talking point of my game do you think Stephen Gerrard knows his best team just now? I thought it was quite a weird selection. I don't actually. think he knows his best team. Yeah. No, I don't think he does. To be fair, and that Dave would drop to the last, bench again. Last year um, he did. Last year he definitely did, but this season there's been injuries. People um, out there's of been form. players out of form. Uh, there's been players that look un- uninterested, unfit. And Ryan Jack isn't far away now, is he? He's he putting his Instagram story coming soon. So yeah. thank the Lord for that. Although, He'll be a massive boost. Uh, I thought Lundstrom was man of the match at the weekend, and maybe. In his last three starts, he's probably been man of the match every every time, which just goes to show you, you don't write a player off no. straight away, especially no. when they're coming to a new team, a new system, uh, for a different a different style of play and such. But let's move on to the defining moment in the game then. It really did change the game. Um, it was something that needed to happen, I think, for Rangers to really get back in the game. It was Ryan Porteous, red card Who'd for thought it? a challenge. Who'd have thought it? Who'd have thought it? A it's challenge... Like um, on Joe the, the only surprising thing was that it wasn't at Morelos that was the only surprising thing <laughs> no well there was an interesting moment a couple of minutes before you know there's a history between Ryan Porteous and Alfredo Morelos of course Morelos goes <coughs> uh, up to the back and gives a wee push you know what I mean lets him know he's there Phil it's definitely a foul but I think that maybe got his blood boiling a wee bit um, and in the next tackle he's thinking I need to lay I need to lay one on somebody here mm-hmm. um, and, and he tries to do it on Joe Rebo that uh, surprisingly at, at the game I thought that's a red card um, he gets up straight away. He starts. He goes. Ah, he apologises to Alfredo Morelos as he goes to confront him. He knows he's maybe did something wrong there. But he's still and raging. He's walking, sent off though. Yeah, and, not, <clears> and then <throat> he starts giving it one of these. Mm. When he's walking off the park, he even looks over to the Hibs uh, backroom staff and he's he's apologising as well. I thought he looked like a, a guilty man to be fair. But then you see people saying it's not a red. That is a red. And and, and you're seeing people saying it's a disgrace. A decision. You're seeing people say it's a. A perfect decision, but where do you guys stand on it's, this? This is completely it's strange, why. Strange, isn't it? Seeing people that think, <clears throat> let's get one thing for certain. Var. Var would not have overturned that decision. No. Never in a million years no, would Var have overturned not. that. Um, Christ, I don't even know where to start with this, uh, but a couple of bits of things that I've been thinking about. <clears throat> one, and it's just like a thing generally in football when you have bad, we have decisions like this, not bad, so we have decisions like this, and people start showing you the slow mo mm-hmm. and the stills. Football's not played in slow motion. And the, the only angle that matters is the one that the referee's got. Mm-hmm. The referee doesn't have every angle, so it's kind of irrelevant. Um, the It's just idiotic from Ryan Porteous. Jack Ross didn't have much to complain about, and I think that's kind of where I stand on it too. Um, he obviously doesn't he doesn't wipe out Aribo. Like, he doesn't clap, but he, he tries to. Yeah. Um, and he if, if he all- does, it's, a, it's an injury. And also, the thing is... When you give a referee a decision like that to make, you've only got yourself to blame. Mm-hmm. And there's no VAR official that would overturn that because yeah. there is a reasonable um, sort of thing to say the referee was right in that, listen, it's reckless, it's out of control and endangered an opponent. Mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I don't know how you can look at what happened there and say that, disagree with that. Um, I get the frustration because ultimately Disney he doesn't catch him. Catch him as but badly as what... He has gone have. to catch him, and if he does catch him, it's a serious injury. It's brainless, it's idiotic, and it is the one thing that's holding Ryan Porteous back from being a, no. a proper good centre half. I agree. And, and you talk, Alfredo Morelos is an interesting one here because 
eighteen nineteen was the most mental season you're ever going to see from a footballer in terms of Alfredo Morelos' discipline. He doesn't do that anymore. Mm-hmm. Ryan Porteous, we've been talking about this for three, four years now, is still doing stupid shit like this. He seems to iron that out his game, and then when he comes out against Rangers, another tackle comes out. I think that's the first thing. He's, he's, he's had a really bad one on Kula Bali, mm-hmm. Bonna Barisic, and but I don't even just mean the tackles. tackles. Just he's just is that a Twitter notification? <gasps> Oh God! It's He's waiting on some it's bold news. Not like Peter Grant. Um, it's not even just about the bad tackles. He's just rash in general. With his defender, he can be very rash, mm-hmm. um, and that is generally, I think, what stopped him from being a Scotland defender so far. But I mean, I, I'm not. I, I, so like, you'll follow yeah. the red card then. You I, I am. Yeah. Yeah. It annoys me too because, like, I still like seeing a good tackle, and I, I, I don't think there's anything. I don't think there's anything wrong with going into a tackle, or leave yeah. something to, to like let someone know you're there and let them know you're in a game. But there is a line but between doing that. It. Do you know what I mean? He should he go in and just take the ball. It goes over the ball, and it's it's his hamstring that kind of catches the ball. That's the he's thing for me. To get the See if he wins the ball the way he's intended and to win the ball. I don't think that'd be a red card. No. But the fact that he's actually missed the ball as well. It shows the intention to hurt him. Yes. Uh, the Ryan malicious McGinley intent's and, the one, isn't yeah, it? Ryan McGinley yeah. and uh, Ryan Fitzsimons were on Twitter very vocal about the fact that they think that it was a disgrace. If that's on that Kyogo, they're all greeting. Probably. But can you see it from their point of view, Adam? Or do you think that that's... I've got to be honest, my mind was changing on it like the weather, to be honest. I, I, I first saw it and my initial glance was that he wins the ball. Yeah. But again, like you said... I think Ryan Porteous's reputation goes before him with these type of encounters. Do you think so? Let's just say. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, I do. It's the same referee that said more for that one against For that Bally. challenge, though, yeah. for that type of challenge. Well, it's, just, it's the same it's ref the same that. fixture. He'll be thinking back to that. But also, uh, and the thing for me is, I'm, I was exactly the same as Adam. When I first saw it, I was Adam and it wasn't a red card. And the more I looked at it, I thought, Christ, it is a red card, really. Um, it's just the, it's just the fact that he, he actually he misses the ball he gets it with the underside of his leg that's not obviously how you're supposed to tackle anyway no. um, but it's the speed that is what is what does it for him it's how fast he goes in and Gerard made an interesting point he doesn't he just needs to clear the ball away yeah. he's going to win the ball every day of the week he actually he could probably just win the ball and he's, keep it he's, he's favourite for the challenge yeah and, and he's just he's gone to yeah. he's gone to leave one on him I think um, the one that sealed it for me was Jack Ross's comments after it where he says he doesn't necessarily agree with the sending off which but is a bit he can like see me. he can see why it's been yeah. given you know I, I know mean? why it's a red card yeah. I don't I don't know if I necessarily want it to be. it's a tough one it's not the, the, the it's the that. angle from behind the goal that kind of seals it for me as well do you is know that, but is that, that's not the angle the ref's got though which is why it's I it's not the angle bit. the ref's got but why in Scottish football are we criticising the ref decision by saying um, he's probably got that right right? but for his angle he's probably not seen it properly so it's not a red for his angle but it is a red depends if the but lines we'll cr- we'll criticise the ref I, I, no, I was going to say surely you're then looking I've seen that the linesman I've seen and that, whatnot though. I've seen that in sports scene or not they're saying well, that, the, the referee hasn't got the perfect angle to see that that's a red but it is a red but is that good but referee still, what? is that well, good like, referee ultimately he's got the, the decision okay, correct are you, are you saying that he's gambling on it What's, I'm not saying that he's gambling on it. I'm just using other people's. What's better he's refereeing? He's obviously seen that it's a, a red card. It's better refereeing not seeing something and guessing and getting it right, or seeing something from your angle that doesn't look like something and getting it wrong. What's a what's we don't actually refereeing? know the referee's true. No, of um, course not. The lines might have helped him out. Yeah, he might have. We, we, we don't actually know his true uh, angle on it as well. But what I'm saying is, people were saying from like obviously hypothetically guessing his angle, he can't see that perfectly. But he's got the right decision, but. He can't see it perfectly. I don't fucking get the, that. The, the, the Only in Scotland would you get that. He got the decision right, guys, but he couldn't see it that good. So but the fact that still going to criticise him. The fact that there is such debate, the such debate on the decision still shows that VAR would have been absolutely useless in that situation. No, no fellow I referee. If that's, enough, is any other league, referee. if that's any other league in the world, there, there isn't a lot of debate here, and no. everybody's agreeing it's a red card. In the Premier League, they don't overturn that on VAR. And Nobody they overturns do it. Over that. Here. Um, and the, the ref might have the, not the angle we have in terms of behind the goal one but what he does see is the speed that he's going on and he can see that it's reckless and he can see that he's endangered an opponent if it's a red card do you not also think that the way that the game was panning out has a lot to do with it as well and that Hibs were looking good up to that point and ultimately the game plan goes out the window with going down to 10 men no absolutely or, it, and I knew straight away Scott Allen would come off the part and he's, he's yeah. the man that would, uh, prov- could have provided sorry that, for him, that actually, killer pass and he was absolutely raging and I'm Rightly sure he'd so. have went into the fucking dressing room and had some words as well with Ryan Polte he you've let me down here I've just got myself back in the team playing in a big game top of the fucking table clash and you've went flying into a tackle that and flying I'm, in recent weeks, I'm ultimately well. sacrificed as a result so uh, I did feel sorry for Scott Allen in that respect because I thought he was a player I was glad to see the back him I thought he was a player that could um, if you're Jack Ross he'd be fucking make a difference because if, if Hibs can go to Ibrox and win 
I know people are talking about Hearts and Hibs just now and how long can they stay at the top of the league, but if Hibs can go to Ibrox and win, Jesus Christ, you're thinking, right, we down. can, we can keep pace. No, or absolutely. at least try to. Um, I will say, though, I think Rangers dealt... The, the guy that I was near looking forward to, to seeing playing against Rangers was Martin Boyle, mm-hmm. and I think Rangers dealt with him pretty well. Um, and then oh, oh, even for the first 30 minutes, do you know what I mean? He never really broke... You see, even in recent years, he's always like, had a few chances versus the Rangers against Borna Barisic, which always pushes on to him, beats him a couple of times, do you know what I mean? But he's finishing as let him down. In this game, I think Rangers dealt with him pretty well. Um, maybe 10 men helped with that as well, though, to be fair, and they changed the game plan. And um, then Rangers, obviously, 10 men, go and win the game. Um, yeah. I, I haven't actually seen a replay back of the first goals at offside. No. 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 I saw a still it's one. just poor marking. Sure. Is it? Yeah, Dan, he's, Dan he's, McGregor. Like, how is he in that much space? Do you know what I mean? He's, he's just like, came on the park. Dan McGregor, um, Dan McGregor obviously comes on, right? So he's no... He, he hasn't been in the shape in that the week, like leading up to the game. I know what you mean. He's, he's so not he's initially not, in the plans. He's not initially in the plans and then Ruth comes off the bench in the second half. So there's a wee bit of confusion there for Hibs. Definitely preventable because it's a, a it's a good ball from Nathan Lovely Patterson. Ball. It is a good ball and it's a, a good finish, but there's way too much space there for Kemar Ruth to put that in the net. Um, especially with how good Hibs had played and, and still defended up until that point. Limited Rangers. Rangers didn't cut Hibs open that much and... Um, they get the equaliser and that's when Hibs started to push on a wee bit more. They create a chance pretty much straight after. Um, and it was in the last the last 10 minutes or so where Alfredo Morelos gets the winner. I think Macy should do a lot better, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, Definitely. good game though, I thought. He made a number M- of Macy, good saves. He made a couple of good saves. One for Yanis Hadji stick, sticks to mines, but he's got to save that for Alfredo Morelos. In that bigger moment, in that bigger game, he, he's got to save that, but... But again, that Rangers goes back to the fact that Portis let him down as well. Yeah. I mean, there's a few games. I mean, the Edinburgh Derby was the same. He made a number of big saves. Yeah. Just I was going to touch exactly on that because I know that Ophir Marciano was highly rated by <laughs> him, but I actually go as far as to say that Matt Macy's the best goalkeeper they've had in a long time. I, I would probably agree with that. I think he's really good. Um, yeah, and Marciano had a mistake in him. He had a happy case of the Kaiser. One thing, I, I just Googled this. I was looking for the, the actual wording in the, the rule book about a, a challenge like that. So a tackle or a challenge that endangers the safety of an opponent or uses excessive force must be sanctioned as serious foul play. Now, you can't watch that and tell me it wasn't excessive force mm-hmm. and it, it wasn't endangering an opponent. It was both of those things. So it, it really shouldn't be up to too much debate because the rule is quite clear on that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, one thing I want to touch about on from a Rangers point of view was the post-match and the celebrations post-match from Steven Gerrard, Nathan Patterson, amongst others. Um, and I think it's interesting, we'll come on to the Celtic game in a minute or two, but to me, it just struck me as relief that's what that was for me. I look at Stephen Gerrard, I'm like, he must be so relieved to have got through yeah. that because it's a massive weekend. You know, Celtic going to Pataudry and win early on during that day. The pressure was right on Rangers to win that. Now, I Absolutely. know, obviously, everyone's, a lot of people saying oh, it was 10-man hibs at home and stuff, but that's almost probably why he's even more delighted because if you slip up there, having Celtic gone on one at Pataudry and Hearts still top of the league, it becomes really, really difficult. And Rangers mm-hmm. have had a bit of a stuttering start, certainly in terms of performance levels. Yeah. Um, and I think it was just massive just to get the three points no matter how, how they, they, do they it. did it. And I think they will have so many better games than that this season. Um, <laughs> you, you feel like you keep saying that though, not meaning the but performance they will, they, they will, there, but they will get better. I totally better. agree with you in terms of relief. Uh, the, the post-match, Gerard was celebrating it like... I, I've never he's, he's celebrated that before but it was like a big fucking had he not even said kind of pre-match that the Sunday game was the big one in his in his mind well obviously it was because you're, you're potentially playing against the best team in the country and that, and that, and that, point, and that in terms of performance in terms of do you know yeah, what I mean yeah, yeah. parts were obviously up there as well but Hibs were undefeated getting into this we'll come to it Hibs were undefeated getting into this um, they would have been confident coming into it Martin Boyle probably the best player in the country Informed that so far this season, I don't you, think you that's too. That, I don't think that's too outlandish, nothing. mate. Uh, he's definitely up there, top two, top three. How dare you? He's, he's, he's been flying this year, um, and, and Rangers ultimately win the game. So it did definitely feel a top of the table clash against a, a, probably the final the best final point with. on that. And to play devil's advocate on the Gerrard celebrating thing is, it reminded me a lot of that old farm win in 2019, where, the he, camera. where he over celebrated and he admitted that himself. And I was watching that a little bit, and I was like, hmm. Like maybe is he going a bit over the top here? I don't know. But then I get, I, I, I yeah. get, I, it's just me playing devil's advocate. I, I saw that argument a lot last night. It's like well, just chill out a little bit. I quite liked it to be fair because some it there's times great. where it's needed and there's times where the performance still. I, I think it was needed for that point because it still showed us we've still got a bit of fucking fight about us here. Yeah, and um, Gerard was was that bit passion. 
Exactly, yeah. exactly. Gerard was frustrated in the sidelines because it was a number of times Yanis Adji was getting the ball passing out the park. Alfredo Morelos was getting the ball passing out the park. And we were getting chances, it was just poor. And he was getting really frustrated in the sideline. Nathan Patterson was, was pretty poor in, up until the cross. Quite across the board out with John Lindstrom, who I thought was really, really good. Leon Balligan was really good. It was quite a poor performance with a lot of unneeded turnovers. So when you get that win, he's just thinking... Thank fuck. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I can go down to Liverpool now and have three days off. And I think the international no break, care. international break, has come at a good time for Rangers. And that a lot of the time you say when you win a game, you want the next game to come quickly. But I think with just the way things are going, he'll want to get a lot of them on the training ground. Um, and I know a lot of them will go on internationals, but, but some will be left there. Good chance yeah. to regroup and, and whatnot. They need to. It's like you mentioned in the first half how they had lots of possession but didn't do anything with it. Now, Gerard's Rangers at the best of me start. Like rapid, yeah. They're out of the blocks. First ten minutes, they've created five chances, and they could be four and a lot. Mm-hmm. Livingston, remember the Livingston game opening day? They could have been five and a lot in fifteen minutes. Even Malmo as well in the Champions League yeah. the first thirty but minutes. They've kind of lost that a little bit recently. I think it uh, comes down to a few things really. I don't think the press is quite there for Rangers at the moment, and we were talking about the way over in the car. To be fair, when you are about Liverpool's press. Everybody needs to be at it. They're living players in the park. Do you know what I mean? If yep. Alfredo Morelos doesn't start the press, and I think that's where it was at Celtic's detriment with missing Kyogo mm-hmm. because he wasn't there to start the press with a Yeti. Do you know what I mean? So you need to you need to have that focal point guy to to start your press, and you also need like across the board need to be pressing in the same direction and know what's happening. And for me, it's been a wee bit disorganised, and that press hasn't been there, and um, which has resulted in a lot of flat moments and just possession for possession's sake. So Rangers need to definitely go away and work on that and come back and, and do the things that they were doing last season in, yeah. in terms of the press. And I think that starts for the top. And so far, the, f- the front three guys, for me, haven't been at it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's interesting. I think the fact Morelos didn't play midweek was an interesting one. But that like, goal was big for him, definitely. Yeah, there was a point but there was a point last season, at the start of last season, when Roof was playing ahead of Morelos and then Gerard quickly realised that Morelos was still his best striker and mm-hmm. had to play every game. Um, I don't know if we'll get to that point because he was playing last season he was playing midweek Saturday midweek Saturday he'll probably start doing that again soon um, let's go to Pataudra quickly we'll, we'll come to them we'll come to them alright we'll come but to Robbie Nielsen's there's absolutely high flying hills oh, go there's Pataudra. no rush um, first game on the no Sunday um, massive massive three points for Ange Postacoglu um, first away win for Celtic since Valentine's Day which is Crazy. mental to think about baffling um, and I thought from the bits of the game I saw, I thought they were pretty hopeless um, for large parts. I think Aberdeen were much better. Um, but they get the win. And again, I think it's really interesting that the old farm teams both had games where all that mattered was three points, not necessarily performance. And you mentioned Kyogo there. He's been back two games now. What a difference he makes. They're like a different... Just everything top he does. He's, and every time I see him, I think, wow, he is a top, top player. His quality of run, the runs he makes are so clever. Yeah. Um, I don't think he's necessarily a great finisher. Um, which we've seen a lot because he's missed a lot of big chances but in, in terms of just an intensity he lifts the game gets the first goal um, great start but then obviously Aberdeen pegged them back um, a goal that seemed to take an eternity to land into the net of Lewis madness. Ferguson and yet another set piece yes that just I don't know like, it was such a weird finish as well he didn't I thought it connect was a, with the header it's like I, off his shoulder, shoulder didn't it aye so I, I, I didn't see much of the first half I, I saw the second half and they were pretty shit in the second half but yeah, yeah t- Turnbull's obviously not been in great for, oh, no he's been in horrific form he's been pretty dreadful recently but that was that shows the quality he has got um, I think it was interesting just to go pre-match obviously um, Cal McGregor started and Neil Beaton started as well which is obviously mm-hmm. an interesting one it is pretty apparent to most people now who are watching Celtic that Tom Rogic and David Turnbull can't play together. Um, they're just not good enough to play as your two sixes with McGregor. It's just not they're not good enough off the ball when they lose it defensively. Um, one of them is fine, and because you can have that bit of quality, great ball from Turnbull. Um, but yeah, the, the Aberdeen goal was uh, mental. I don't really Montgomery's just he can't do it. He's just not tall enough, right? Fair enough, but. Also, Joe Hart just Should Joe Hart not just shove him out the way? Just, nah, nah. just don't even think of it. Just clatter him out of the way and yeah, just go and get I it. I think so as well. Like, it's in the air for long enough for Hart to get there. Yeah. Surely, a man of his experience has got to realise, right, there's no way he's... Or even if he is going to off line, who cares? Just fucking clatter him. I don't think we Montgomery... He kind of jumps up and retracts his neck ah, at the same he, time. He, he, he looks like a child, doesn't he? I think he maybe thinks... 
Hart is going to come and get it. Yeah, it was, so I it think it's a case a of the both of them maybe protection no. just in case he comes through the back exactly like need to take ownership the, the both of them do you know what I mean just go and win the ball because back to what I was saying about Conor Wilson just go and probably I just go and fucking win the ball mm. just go and save it um, as you said it was an R set piece the way that Ramsey was hitting them in as well I was thinking that's quite poor balls but he was floating them in mm. yeah. but it was quite hard for Celtic to, to clear that and I thought Aberdeen looked um, pretty organised in, in attacking set pieces they had another big chance for Scott Brown that would have been which just ends up going straight to the goalkeeper and makes a save the banter years highlight and without a doubt see to be honest guys I think the thing that changed this game and I need to give Ange Postecoglou the credit here was the substitutions yeah. for me Brown was dictating the play in the second half and Aberdeen looked very comfortable very comfortable I think Celta had one shot in the second half or something like that they two they shots on target two enough. shots on target in the game I thought Brown was dictating the play comfortable playing really well even having opportunities Stephen Glass takes him off with 15 minutes to go brings on a like for Leighton Dylan McGill with Matthew Longstaff still playing in a more attacking role who was pretty poor on the day so he takes off his best performer well, probably uh, in Scott Brown down to cramp and at the same time yeah, he was cramping yeah. up who? He Brown Scott Brown cramp. maybe but he comes off a part and he doesn't look like he's too happy about the decision and ultimately it came back to bite him in the arse because on the other hand Ange Postecoglou brings on Tom Rogic he goes in uh, gets in the spaces Makes where Scott Brown would usually be in between the defence and the midfield picks up the ball very good and it's a, and it's a good goal for Celtic to be that's, fair that's what I, I think the manager I, I give the manager the credit for winning that game for Celtic and Stephen Glass the, the discredit of fucking taking half his, his key piece for me but I think David summed it up well when he said about Tom Rogic and David Turnbull not being able to play together it's a brilliant luxury for Celtic to have to introduce one or the other yeah. you know they might look at the starting lineup and think yes Callum McGregor and Nier Beaton are in there but additionally you know in recent weeks, the the overall feeling is that Celtic don't have enough quality on the bench to come on and change the game if they're chasing the game. With Rogic or Turnbull now, in this case it was Rogic, they've got somebody that can contribute in the final third, albeit I still don't really fancy a Yeti. The Greek boy's obviously still out injured uh, and whatnot. That, that, it's for the goal for funny. Celtic, that little possession Rogic finds himself in, I don't think it's many better in, in the country at that. Taking the ball in the half Agreed. turn, it's a great turn. And the weight of passing at Montgomery is fantastic and then it's just on a plate for, for, ah, it's a for simple um, goal. George Michael. Um, yeah. <laughs> Great goal, John wow. Murphy. Yeah, he's a good player, by the way. I, I, I was impressed when he's the right, signing man. I was like, oh, don't, it's one of those. It can go one of two ways, but he does look really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, Celtic, they're still short, though. Uh, you know, if I mean, Kyogo, the fact that you beat on starting in the midfield for the first time. But this, 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 this is why I think you've got to give. You. This why you think you've got to give Ange a bit of leeway. I know, I'm, I'm not saying you can criticism, and God knows, like he's deserved a bit in recent weeks. But if he's still got near beat on that dross to start. In a game at Pataudry in 2021, it's mental. There's only so much you can do in it. No, there is no, only the so much is, you can do. Just thin as hell. It's, it's, it's yeah. just not good enough at all. And that game looked like it was it was going towards a draw. Yeah. Quite comfortable. But, but they still spent millions. This is what I can't. But, but the, look at their net spend's not that big at all. Because if you go back to last January, they sold Frimpong, they sold El Hamid, they sold Edwards. I don't actually think they're. I think they're, they're, they're in profit. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But they've got rid of the spine of their team, man. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I know that everybody. There was a lot made about. Uh, Odds and Edward and Ayer wanting to leave. The worst one, the biggest one's Ryan Christie. And I said it at the time. Where as soon as he goes, he's flying for Bournemouth yeah. as well. They're massive players to fucking to lose mm-hmm. for any team, yeah. and to go and replace him. And just been fortunate in the fact that Kyogo's come in and he's hit the ground running. If he doesn't come in and hit the ground running, I don't know where Celtic would be at the moment because he has been phenomenal, a shining light in, in a Celtic team that's maybe not been hitting the heights. Uh, even even Callum to, McGregor, to, to been quickly, right as well. quickly touch that that Labour Cousin game last week, I know they, they got thumped in the end, but I thought he was brilliant. I thought some of the stuff, listen, he should probably score. Finishing was off, but yeah, the, the movement, the movement, movement really he's so clever. And, and, and his letter picking was tremendous yeah, as well. Yeah, he, 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 <laughs> he, he was super picking up, picking up the rubbish. Um, and Callum McGregor Look, looked really good as well he, he does look back to his best this season Yeah. but again similar come back to what we said about Rangers it's just relief for Ange um, to get that win um, if you're off, off I mean, their back now see, for, for Celtic Rangers three points was all that mattered this weekend they yeah. both got I think, it I think it is interesting how we look at the both Glasgow teams and their performances this weekend though because you're talking about Rangers playing against Hibs undefeated a uh, top of the table clash and then you're talking about uh, and, then, and then being a negative to a certain extent you know what I mean the performance and then you go to Celtic um, they're playing a, a mid-table clash basically against Aberdeen Stop it all, Aberdeen, of course being generous to Aberdeen <laughs> but that's where they are on the table at yeah. the moment do you know what I mean both of them have been banging at a form and they go and get it and it's 
seen as a in a, in a positive light. But fair enough. Uh, needing I mean, the three I'll, points. I'll down to the fact that no matter who Celtic are just play at home, they're always some massive favourites. It doesn't matter who they're playing at home. If they, unless it's each other, they're obviously massive favourites. You know, Pataudry, Easter Road, Tynecastle, Fir Park, early kick off on a Sunday is always going to be tough, no matter what form they're in. Um, and so they certainly have got to go to Fir Park soon as well. That's going to be tough as well. It'll be another one of those games. After the break, isn't three it? Three points is all that matters. Um, yeah, but again, it, it, that comes back to the stages they're at. I mean, Rangers are defending champions um, with a really good squad. Celtic have got a really thin squad and are at probably the lowest they've been in a long time. Uh, that's so. got my mind in point. It pretty much shows how, how far Rangers have came then. Yeah, absolutely. looking at it at that point of view. because I still it from like three, four years ago. It was the opposite way around, wasn't it? That's still top of the league and, and it looks like a fucking... Do you know what I mean? It looks so negative at the moment still for the outside looking in, but they're still top of the league. Yeah, but there's also this thing about how there's a lot of Rangers fans, young Rangers fans now, who are not used to being in this situation, so they're panicking a little bit. Like, do you know what I mean? I don't mean that as a dig, but generally uh, there are a lot of Rangers fans that are not used oh, to them winning the Premiership. You're saying that they've peaked. No, but like, especially the younger ones, and they're like, they lose a game, and like, holy shit, we're rubbish again, we're rubbish that's again. Like 13 like, or something. just chill out. <laughs> I don't know. 16, 17, maybe 18, actually. Oh, what no. was the last day of the Premiership? 2011. 2011. Uh, some some bicycle no, behaviour going on. Last year. Yeah, well, I. So, yeah, but uh, you're right, a lot of Rangers fans are panicking. Aye, there is. Don't need to. Rangers are winning ugly at the moment, do you know what I mean? Which is a. They did that a lot of times last year as well. They did, but there was also moments where they were absolutely that game after just the no international hit, break no hit the well, also, it also th- it. like they've not had a, a top European performance yet exactly which was uh, a theme in Stephen Gerrard's management the last even, even early on like his European stuff at times maybe saved his job early on yeah. think about that first season second season you know the that European was one stuff. of the main objectives I think early on for yeah, Stephen yeah, Gerrard worked, doing well in so, Europe and getting the fucking but again if you ask Stephen Gerrard I was going to say you're getting that little bit extra door or what yeah, or, right. just, or just as a, as a well I've said it a lot of times if Stephen boost, if Rangers don't go and beat Liga Arvosa in the last minute fucking Jordan Jones puts the ball into Alfredo Morelos Ryan Kent's no Rangers do you know what I mean? So it, 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 was so, it was so important for Stephen Gerrard to 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 qualify for for European competition, and if that starts to go down the pan, then aye, but he, he won't but care. They have kind of plateaued, really? I think, in Europe. All to he wants to do is win the league title again. And if Rangers win the league title this year, they go the straight into the Champions League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, exactly. That's if he offered Stephen Gerrard just goal. the league title this year, he would bite your hand it. off for it right now. I think. Uh, Rangers fans wouldn't because they'll want more. Need a but cup. He would bite your hand off for it. Rangers I don't care need a cup. Right, let's quickly wrap up the Premiership where the, the last couple of games before we come to um, the table toppers. Um, we'll go to the Tony Macaroni. Massive, massive three points for St. Mirren. Ethan head on with the goal. Um, and Max Stryak just threw the ball in the net again. He did. He's, He's so hot and cold. <laughs> yeah, Levy have had strange keepers in the last few years. Like they either had amazing, amazing keepers or, or just, just shite. <laughs> shite. Um, I well, I mean, Levy are in a bit of trouble. Adam, though, this season. Said it from the very start, mate. Yeah, I really worry for Livy. Um, loves, loves a prediction, this guy. Loves I a do. prediction. Well, but you look at what's below him, not my job as well, I suppose. So. <laughs> you, you, you look what's below Livy and, and Ross County and Dundee as well. So I think it's between no, day three and St. Mun. St. Mun's that I probably be. I, I was going to say, St. Mun are undefeated in five now, I think. I think they'll eventually pull away. But yeah. the other three will be rightfully looking at one another. Yeah. Firmly em- he, embroiled in a basement battle, those three. Goodwin, I watched Goodwin's post match as well, and he says. He was almost conceding at the fact that Levy should have probably scored one or two as well. So I don't think it was as good a performance as it was, was made. But the three points was was massive and ultimately in the, the defining See, moment against the Ryan threw the ball in the back of the net and the three turned points. Out the win regardless. That's I think a theme exactly. this weekend, isn't it? Teams just getting three points no matter how Aye, they do it, it's all that matters. Pretty much. Even, but winning ugly. Yeah, even Hearts will come on to them, but they weren't super no, bad, sec- they? second half was yeah. ugly, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, so Who yeah, cares? the game was won. The first. <laughs> but yeah, I, I noticed Lovey Bruce Anderson was on the bench. Now, pre season, I thought he would be the main man for them in terms of if okay. they're going to stay up, and it's not really happened. Uh, Andrew Shinney's been a bit of a shining light, but yeah, a game like that at home, if you're Davy Martindale, you're kind of hoping. And they dominated the that. game. Like mm-hmm. when you see some of the highlights back, there's one where. Iowa Belay heads towards goal from a corner and Jack McMillan has literally got to just get any sort of solid contact on it from a couple yards out yeah. and it ends up wide and as a manager I was feel or looking at the manager I was feeling for David Martindale because there's only so much that he can do he's obviously executed a game plan to an extent but the players just haven't been able to carry it out through if you're him though, after being yeah. sell to go home to the not to lose to St Martin at home you must be thinking what the fuck I've got to do I know you know that, that, he's winning it's that a tough game. week as well though because they went to Ibrox then came to us and yeah. were pretty, in a lot of the Livy games they're only getting absolutely battered mm. no 
Do you know it's quite close games and They've still got a solid squad. There's still a number of players. That's in why I think they'll be all right though. because I think it will click they for them. And they, will, goals, they will have sort of a wee purple patch at some point. And I think that's a moment where they could maybe pull away for the opposition because, as I say, the games have been quite close. Other than stupid errors for goalkeeper and such, they're quite solid at the back. Yeah, I mean, you know I mean? we're in October now. I am. Um, we're not far from Christmas. It will fly upon you. You've got a couple of international breaks. They need to start picking up points and scoring goals. And I think yeah, they'll do that quickly. Sure. I, I can't believe that he came out with that re- that relegation comment saying mm. that they will not be relegated because these types of things just all... Bite, yeah. Of course. Yeah. And I don't see anybody... I'm a big admirer of teams down the bottom, but they've got somebody to hang their hat upon. I don't see that at Livingston and I haven't all season. Yeah. Um, I disagree. Oh. But anyway. Oh, oh right. Okay. Who's, who said man? Who's said man? What? Huh? Who said man that they're hanging their hat upon? Graham Shinney. Andrew Shinney. Yeah. Andrew Shinney. <laughs> <laughs> Graham no, Graham Shinney in January, mate. Maybe I'll get sh- sh- shining. Shining, maybe I'll get shining. I think they've got some good players. I think it's maybe a, I think they it's maybe a unit kind of thing. But that's maybe. that's what I think the problem maybe. is. You can have as good a unit if you want, but if you've not got anybody to stick the ball in it, you're no, no. So that's uh, no I idea. Agreed. They need to start scoring goals, man. Um, right. Um, is that that? Oh, they don't recall that boy Nubly. Oh, Sorry, just mate, to, just to be, chat that out now. crazy not to, I think, in January. He's, not, he's still not scoring. He's honestly twinkle to his feet. I don't know how, he's so <laughs> uh, good. Our both against Kelly, I watched it, and even though it ended 0-0, I was like, that mate, boy is a player. when they pumped us East End Park, he was phenomenal. Like, and yeah. he's got, like, They'd be daft not to recall. I feel mental saying this, but he's got everything. Like He's big, he's strong, he's quite good feet, good finisher. Yeah, I think they might go back from in January. Um, right, Dundee United, Ross County, good win for Dundee United at home. Um Another really? ugly win. Yes, yeah, really, but I'm really <laughs> impressed with Dun United. Um, but Massive I'm, I, fan of their wins being solely 1-0. Yes. Yeah. It's yes. such a cliche to Mate, say that oh, you take I'm a 1-0 every like week. Like S, but, you would just yeah. die for it. Um, I don't want to delve too much into this game because we've got a lot to talk about in terms of an off-the-pitch incident. Now, funny because last time, oh, well, not funny, but last time me and Dev we did a show, we said we did a big talk about this sort of stuff at the end of yeah, it. Yeah, but and and we, we were like... Uh, no doubt throughout the season we'll have another segment about this and literally the next show we're on later. Um, what a I mean what a pair of bollocks on Tam Courts fair fucking play oh, to love, love that, that behaviour just superb um, I mean there's not the d- details are a bit sketchy um, but Giando Fuchs was it during the goal celebration or I believe so he, um, he yeah because it looks like abuse. County are taking centre and mm. then he sort of has a wee chat with a couple of teammates doesn't I, he so I mean, it's all it's all alleged, and yes, there's been statements that have come out and whatnot. I think it's still ongoing. So yeah, Dundee United are still investigating you know, the matter. Yeah. Um, but I did think Ross County were way too quick to come out and basically say that this didn't, didn't happen. happen. Yeah. Malky McKay being at the front of that, and then statements coming out saying. Um, what was it they said in the statement again? They they zero tolerance for racism. They take, uh, they've taken a. a Huge stance against it in the past and continue to do so. And then they put in Malky McKay in the summer, which is talk about mixed mate, talk about mixed trouble. Messaging. Again, read the room, fucking Malky McKay. Just you shut up. He yeah, he really should have just shut his mouth post match. I can't remember exactly what his comments were, but they were. He said something about how they happen, were so quick to bring the t-shirt out. Yeah, he he thought Tam Courts was uh, yeah. He, uh, okay, yeah, just, he thought he should have done like, it quickly. Like, oh, but I mean, odd I, comment the, the from thing from Tam Courts was he's obviously not he's not had time to think about that. He's obviously just seen it and thought. And right, he's led I mean, by example. That's see, that's, that's leadership. Really that's, back in his man. Love yes, hundred percent. Um, now, even if, even if like somehow they didn't, this didn't happen. I mean, see, uh, and, and somehow it didn't happen. Right, it's still a good message. To, do you know what I mean? It's still nah. a good message to send. You know, he's back in his player. Um, Definitely. Yeah, just not a nice situation again. For me, I was Giandro Fox knows what he heard. He's a fucking professional football. He hears shouts all the time. He knows what he heard. Oh, yeah. I mean, do you know what I mean? Uh, would so they, would they really sound. make something no, up? This is, this is my, no, no, this is my no, no, whole no, question. No, he's not say, I know uh, you're uh, not uh, saying uh, that, but no, I'm just uh, saying. Yeah, totally. Fair profi- uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. And it's just uh, it's just mental. Absolutely mental. But fair play to Tam Courts for, for doing that. And um, again, we'll. we'll as I said that we said this last time. These things, they appear to get worse before they get yeah. better because you have to keep calling these things out. And it's good that that's happened. And the fact that he had the confidence to go and say, This is what's happened. Mm-hmm. You know, in times gone by, you might have just put the head down and just gone, Well, I'll just go accept that because that's what people used to do. Now he's got. Like, I hate it when. And his teammates backed him as well, which is good. No, absolutely. It was class. But um, I hate it when clubs, they're using Ross County as an example here as well, are quick to just straight away jump Friends. on the defensive. Do you know what I mean? Like, let the investigation take. 
all their Take its course or whatever. It, it appears and then very guilty. Because, when exactly, you, when it you appears do guilty, that. and it also it just looks horrible. It the, just looks this, like you're this, victim blaming. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Their statement just had to say, "We could then raise some all forms. We'll investigate the matter, we'll investigate the matter. and to come back to you." That's they just all they had to say. Away had to be concise. Yeah, it doesn't I mean, even have to be go into great <clears throat> detail. Just yeah. something short, concise. And, uh, you don't stand see, for it. You're investigating it. Genuinely, we'll see how this investigation comes out. But the way that they handle this situation from here on out is going to be massive because. If they continue to handle this badly, following back for appointing Malcolm McKay in the summer, it is a dreadful PR job for, for Ross County. They'll, they'll do themselves a lot of damage. Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, yeah, which is it's just not great. But again, um, it'll be an issue that won't go away. These incidents will keep happening, which is not ideal. Um, but yeah, I, I just generally on Tam Courts, from a football point of view, what a job that guy's doing. And fair it play to him, is. because I've not seen a manager hated so much by a set of supporters since that fickle mob last season. Um, <laughs> before, a ball was, before a ball was kicked... Count me in. Before a ball was kicked this season, Dungeon Knight fans wanted rid of Tam Courts. Mm-hmm. They thought it was a cheap appointment. They thought he was nowhere near qualified. And they were slagging the owners and him. And he's been brilliant since he went in. Got to be honest, I was in that exact same boat. I just, it just felt as though it was such a rookie appointment, delayed for him that he's proven me wrong. Did, did you see uh, Mark Ogren, the owner, came out and praised him big time this week, which I thought was interesting because normally you only ever hear from chairman on managers when they're struggling, mm-hmm. and it's like a vote of confidence. He's not even struggling. He just came out and said they're delighted, but he's done really, really well. Um, but yeah, well done to them. Dun United top six looking good. Um, and it's let's a really great squad. Yes, let's look at the smile. Let's round off the the Premiership weekend with a. Uh, the jam tarts. Delighted. Talk to me, Adam. Delighted. Good one. Absolutely delighted. Motherwell were flying to. They were. Um, yeah, had a little bit of nerves heading into the game, definitely, given the uh, the crest of the wave that Motherwell were riding. Six unbeaten, I think it was in the league before Saturday. Best start since 1958. Oof. Jesus. Yeah. And I see that it's, I think, what are they on? 14 points? That It's the highest that they'd sort of gathered from... The since opening seven since <laughs> No, no, because I was going to say because since it went to three points per uh, win, yeah. then it's it's like since ninety four. So they were. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. That's bit who scored knowledge there for you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, delighted. That being said, first half excellent. Why Liam Don't Kelly rushes out after right. five minutes? Right. I said I really do not. I know. said pretty sure I want to talk about him. He looked as far away from a Scotland goalkeeper as oh. I've seen in a long time. And it's so it. uncharacteristic Aye, of him to. Even the free kick. Going into the game. I think he should have saved the free kick. No, I think he, he, and he's admitted that he apologised to the uh, Taylor Murrowell fans at half time because he made the two errors that led to the two goals. Getting into the game, I think uh, both teams were playing really well. You're looking at the two goalkeepers, aren't you, and saying who's going to step up here and who's going to have it's the best performance? Um, what a goalkeeper. Obviously, exactly, and that's why Craig Gordon is Scotland's number one at the moment. Because you look in the, the one side, Liam Kelly, that, man. Uh, still young to be fair for goalkeeping terms. He comes out rashly, takes boys out of the game. Don't why do that because he's just firing six penalties. Hearts have had this season already. <laughs> I mean, cool. and over the new Rangers now, mate. Exactly, <laughs> conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. But um, he makes two oh, errors. I can feel the call. And then on the other side, the other side of the part, Tony Watt with a wonder side oh. with the left foot. Craig Gordon with a fingertip save over the bar. Um, what I will say is Tony Watt was definitely their um, bright light top man. in, the, in, the, in an offensive a lot. sense. You know, I took a bit I, stick for sh- praising him last weekend. I thought Kane Willery was pretty quiet, had a chance that he should have scored. Van half. Veen was pretty non-existent. Mm. He was but Tony, Tony, but Tony, Tony was Watt, Van Veen, I know. Tony Watt, just typical uh, former heart striker that was totally useless for us and looked mm-hmm. as though he was going to score against us at, at any given opportunity. Yeah. So. Um, also, the, the, the penalty, penalty, goals, but the penalty no, save from Liam Kelly, uh, he's, I don't know how far off his line he is. I mean, he's, almost, oh, he's, he's, he's almost on the penalty spot. Oh, <laughs> for, first me. of all, it's a soft penalty. Yeah, That's not and a penalty. No. And then, like you say, he's miles off his line. Who was the young lad that got fouled? Uh, that is Cammy Devlin. Oh, Did you see what he'd done when he got up? No, mate. The whoever it was that filled, filled, I filled him was getting him stick, and he just gets up, eighteen year old, didn't he? Starts no, rubbing no. the back. He's, he's, he's about twenty three, twenty four. Right, he's fucking old as fuck. Then um, I thought he was young. They might have been talking about it on the radio. He's tiny, says, and you expect him to uh, be so young. On the radio, they were saying he was a young player, Sorry, but mate. if that's young nowadays, <laughs> but um, fair play to him getting up and getting him one of them. We oh, a, a wee bit shit house, Ray. Right. I think. How did, uh, did we Benny do? 
To usual. He won. Did he know? No, he didn't win a penalty. It's like it? a, they're all, they're no. all like proud, yes, he won the free kick. Proud fathers. This lot. They're just in complete love with him. I love him so much. He's um, what a player. He's going to leave you and break your heart. God, my soon. Congolese king. And he's what a player. And, you, and he's a Hearts player. He's yeah, going to leave him. He's going to leave him very quickly if he keeps. But he's not got a two-year deal. A three-year deal. I'll be. I'll be astounded if he sees out. Again, hell, man. A year One. And a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. January Rangers are signed him. Hannah Grant. Well, I was just gonna say because uh, <laughs> talk about Glenn Kamara at Dundee. No. A perfect. No. Yes. no. I'm not saying he's anywhere near Glenn Kamara. Do you know what I mean? But, no, but, but maybe they thought Glenn Kamara you? would have got to that level. Yeah, that's I'm just you. saying he's on the radar. No, to be what fair, his, his performances have been absolutely outstanding for a guy that. Maybe was he doing a pre-season he said well, he joined Hearts late no yeah, he didn't it, do the pre-season with Hearts he wasn't no. part of the plans to he was, straight away he was thrown right in for the Celtic and game he was to make his debut. he's been brilliant since here's, right. a hot, here's a hot take I've not loved a Hearts player as much since Rudy Scatchel I there saw a go. lot of that oh, the weekend best what a player stuff. my Congolese king if you know you know I saw a lot of best to Scatchel stuff Viva de Conga anyway right big question everyone wants to know can you maintain this pace no Good, I like it, honestly. <laughs> bro, yeah, bro, you look at the squad of Hearts, you've brought in Barry Mackay as well, who's hit the ground running. Barry Mackay's been the winger that Hearts have needed since Sam Nicholson left the club. Yeah. What a player he was. What's he up to these days? He's down at Bristol Rovers. Did he not go to America? Am I making that up? No, he did. Yeah. He was over with uh, the Colorado Rapids mm. and Minnesota United. He was United really good, that. There you go. Anyway, uh, I obviously uh, know also, Sam, so that's how I know that. We get him on the show. Any, got him on Pennycook LinkedIn. High School's finest, um, mate. Got him on LinkedIn, haven't you? He knows a lot of people. We, we've not, never once seen a yeah. fucking guest come on for us. I know. We haven't moved on from to. Anyway, know. final I'm question. Trying. Is uh, Robbie Nielsen still the right man to be in charge of Heart of Midlothian Football Club? When I Ibrox, yes. <laughs> I still would like it. They're still at back. No, can you just imagine how? Just, last season, I have never seen such vitriol towards a manager from a group of supporters and much hatred. Oh, was that? A Did case you watch us last season? Wait, no, no. But was it a case? Of, uh, Nielsen knew how to get the job done in the championship, so it was ugly. No, in, it's a in, case of Anne Burns knows best. That's what it's a case of. Isn't that right? She does do oh. She does know best. Yeah, a proper yeah. manager. Um, I mean. Yeah. Look, I think Joe Savage as sporting director as well takes a lot of a lot of um, praise and rightly so. Aye, recruitment's been brilliant. It has for once. Yeah, because it's no longer here. It's been hopeless for it's been recently, isn't it? Horrendous. Yeah, I Whoever so. identified Benny, man, Jesus Christ. But see, also, this is what when I you look at from Joel Pereira to him, it's quite a. I know that. Um, you know, thanks, mate. I know your directors and all that can obviously sway players and get them on board. But see, when you look at the the Hearts manager and the backroom staff, there's some pull in there, isn't there? Mm. Yeah, we Stephen A. Smith still in there, isn't he? Like is, he is he just a coach? There was a yeah, and like then you've got Jig and all. There's some pool there, and players want to go be a part of that. There was a, do you know what I mean? A rumor going round uh, two weeks ago. Did you see this? I did. See that. <laughs> I think Jig was going to take the Don Felman job. Uh, him, and him, and Kenny, and him and Kenny. Him and Kenny. Someone obviously just got bored and decided to tweet that. And was like, oh, he's getting the Don job. Fuck off. Um, anyway, we're done with Hearts now. We got the championship. I was going to say, well, you've just touched on Dunfermline, so... Oh, do we have to start there? Well, let's just let me prepare myself first. Go to Ante. Right, we'll go to the Championship first. Let me just get my, my fixtures up so we can... Um, uh, I, I did can, want to say yes, that we would maintain it, but I'm, I'm a realist. realist and, yeah. um, I'm going to say yes. A lot, a lot of noise happening. What, you think they're going to maintain that pace? I want it for the league, for like competitiveness so, and yeah, excitement. So that, that game after the international break... Oof. Who is it? Is it us? At yeah, Ibrox? Ibrox. Oh, it's tasty, isn't it? Ah, oh. ay, ay, ay. It's got really. It's got. Um, it's got Osmond Soul vibes. To go back to the bathroom stuff. I mean, Jag, Nate. Don't man. you dare. Just do a job. Don't you do the same. Job we the Andrew Halliday. Oh. I'm Barry. He's yeah. there and all. You know, we we Robbie. You mean Future Rangers centre mid. Yeah. Right. Benny. I mean, Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's go to the championship. I'm going to leave them for to last. Obviously. Um, some. Big, big results. Partick Thistle 4, Air United 0 at Far Hill. What a great Man. result for the Jags. 30 goals in the games they've been involved in this season. How many eight have them ga- games? No, that's not many they've scored, but <laughs> it's been 30 goals in their game this season. Oh, in the eight games. games. Phenomenal. Massive um, fan of Jim Duffy getting the job at Air to then be greeted with yeah, a 4-0 defeat in his first game. Yeah, brilliant. Um, yeah, what a result for Thistle. Um, they've had a really good start to the season considering they're newly promoted. Air are just dog shit, but you know, there's a number of dog shit teams in that league as we'll come to. Um, <laughs> Another, oh, this is, oh, right, I'm going to leave that game until second last because this story about that um, Greer Morton 2 I broke 2 I thought I broke were going to win that um, late on they scored a, a late equaliser um, through Mikey McKenna I thought they'd be going nick a winner just because that's the way they seem to be mm-hmm. doing it just now but again 
considering where they are in the league, you might think that they should have won that game. But it's a good point for our bro. That's what I was going to say. The Campbell still our, very much stay in the league, yeah. and that's all that matters. As long as our bro are picking up points, I think it's a positive result. And and I think at Gayfield, by Christmas. at Gayfield, the vast majority of the points will come anyway. Yeah. So any any point or points on the road mm-hmm. should be seen as a bonus. Um, but even for Morton, I know they're at home, but considering how flying our bro are, they can't be too disappointed with that with that point. Um, I hear that but I worry for Morton's safety I worry for Morton every year and they somehow find a way don't they um, Hamilton 2 Inverness 1 what a win for the Ackies down to 10 men as well chance um, for Inverness to go 6 points clear I was going to say your, your championship winner mate um, no. but, but to be fair Ackies were 2-0 up and then went down to 10 men on the half hour and still managed to win <laughs> Um, despite Michael Garden's um, late goal for Inverness, Garden's doing quite well now. He's found a bit of form at Inverness. Yes, gone. He the most he's a good bizarre player. situation ever is that he's still going to go and get a testimonial at Ross County. I was going to say exactly that. It still blows my mind, having been. He's Ross County's appearance holder and ah, he's like, the best player of all time. He is the best player of all time. He is crazy. Um, yeah, but they've all done that a well. Ian Vigers has gone to and fro. There's yeah. a number Mackay's of them. Mackay's went to Inverness. Draper did both. Um, there was a few. Billy Mackay's done both. Yeah, there was loads of them. Um, Cole Donaldson as well. He was at both. There's, you could make a decent 11 out of people that played <laughs> both. Played for both. Um, anyway, so second line, oh, actually, quickly on that. Uh, listen to Billy Dodds post match. I, I, I'm amazed at how well you will be as well. How well Billy Dodds has done at Inverness. Oh, definitely. I, I do quite like listening to him. On the radio, yeah, I've always liked listening to the radio, but, but again, I always thought he'd be one of those practice. guys that would just talk a good game. Yeah, he's yeah. actually doing quite well up there. Fair yeah. play to well, him. He's a number two for absolutely years, so it's yeah, good yeah, to yeah. see him get his opportunity. Oh, he's he was at number two county under Jim McIntyre, I think, as well. I'm pretty sure, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, anyway, second last game, I come on to Kelly against Ray Throwers 3 1 to the Rovers. What a massive result for John McGlynn's men. That is. Now, the interesting thing was my train on Saturday went Glasgow to Dumfries, but it also stopped at Kelly. So, on the way back, I was oh, sitting dear. there just miserable, and a bunch of Rovers fans poured on at Kelly, and I was like, you fucking arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they were having a good thing so fair play to them they've been flying um, interesting one Wraith have had a bit of an interesting start of the season in that they, they, they haven't picked up as many results as it's they haven't been as good as last though, season it? but like when they click they still seem to be brilliant and where on earth does this Dario Zanasta come from as well because he's had a couple honking spells elsewhere yeah. mm-hmm. air, Thistle, air, Thistle, air yeah. didn't work and he's done sometimes really, really he well sometimes he just find a club it just, just clicks yeah yeah, yeah. he's finding a manager that works and great mm-hmm. result um, not great for Kelly at home and obviously no. but they've got the bottom of the league side next so that'll be fine for them three points talking <laughs> of the bottom of the league side <laughs> the Whitten boys the here we go boys. get um, the popcorn out no it's uh, we always build these things up have you had the up. notification yet no I haven't we always build these things up and I end up not going into as much Details possible. I feel like you should just interview me at this point. It's got to come kind of off the cuff, hasn't it? Yeah, these um, sorts of things. He, he's just got to go. Um, well, I seen on Twitter you but you tried to change your mindset going into it. I'm oh, I did. Uh, oh, yeah. The night get before, I was like, "This is the day. It's the day we went away." We're going to get it. Hold on a second. Who's fickle now? Uh, yeah, I know, but <sighs> you, need to, you need to just not uh, PMA all the way. Going. This is what it's all I'm about. Not, I'm not fickle to say get Grant to fuck in the next day. Oh, we'd love you, Peter Grant. You do so well. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm back the team. <laughs> no, back the team. Sack the manager. Sack the board while we're at it. No, generally, if Peter Grant is not gone by the end of this week, the board are next, and Ross MacArthur has to go. So what you're essentially telling us is the board are next. Yes, hundred percent. If he's not gone this week, that MacArthur has to go. And I, I, I hate that because I, I, I really respect him. And I think he's a good guy. I but don't like calling for people to get a sack. No, you don't. Only especially so much at this you level. Take. Even Peter Grant, he's a nice guy. I've met him a few times. Nice guy. He was good with me. But he's so far out of his depth, it's just ridiculous. We are horrendous. About 20 minutes in, I tweeted, don't give a shit if we win. We are fucking awful. Get rid of him. Like, we are so bad. You've honestly no idea. We don't have a shot on target at the weekend. We don't. And we've got good players, too. That's the most frustrating mm-hmm. thing. You said um, exactly that a couple of weeks back. And like, last Summer season, Street. I backed Stevie Crawford a lot and got a lot of stick from him. Stevie Crawford got. The, a very similar group of players into the playoffs, and you know, I didn't think we didn't think he was good enough. Yeah, we've gone so far backwards. It's mental. that's what I was going to say. Who's on the potential well, short we'll, list? We'll, we'll come to that. I mean, I, I'm expect. Well, am I, am I expecting? I don't know. I'm hoping he'll be gone today. Um, the Germans were back in Germany over the weekend, so I don't I think I might delay things a little bit. But it's the perfect time to get rid of a manager. International, International break, break. Get yeah. somebody in. Get them on the training ground. Big game at home at Kelly after the last break. Now with a new manager bounce, a big crowd. And a decent performance there. You can turn your season around so quickly. And you're going to do well then. You can really salvage your season. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Um, yeah, but Ross MacArthur. So if he doesn't go this week, pff, I just don't get it. The more and more I think about the appointment, the more bizarre it gets. You're appointing a guy who's got a dreadful managerial record, who got relegated last season, only won five games, and didn't mm-hmm. apply for the job. And you didn't hold an interview process for the 80-plus applicants that did. Um it is gross negligence, especially when you see it. If it goes well, fair play, but it doesn't. And also, you look at his last 
He appointed Alan Johnson in 2015 when we were in League One. Now, Alan Johnson won that league comfortably and got us promoted, so fair enough. But, I mean, I could have got that team promoted because <laughs> they were so much better than everything else in that league. He then, Alan Johnson then, first couple of seasons, finished mid-table in the playoffs. Did okay, but a bit frustrating. At times, for those times, he should have gone as well. We got hammered 5-2 off Queen in the South at home, and he's kept his job. I remember that. Then, following season, he gives AJ a two-year deal um, off the back of failing to get promoted the year before. Um, he's then gone by January. So that so from then, giving AJ a two-year deal was a massive mistake, as it proved out to be. He then appointed Stevie Crawford, which was the cheap option. He was already at the club. He was already contracted. Now, as much as I love Stevie, ultimately didn't work. And now he's gone and headhunted Peter Grant, and it's been an absolute fucking disaster. So three managerial decisions all in a row have been disasters, ultimately. And th- there's only yeah, one. It's not good enough. No, it's not. And the, and the, the board and the chairman are couple for that. And, and all about the wrong as people, much as the wrong I, places. As much mate. as I and respect him nice and like feeling. what he's done, you've got to take responsibility. And if you don't sack him this week, they are all just fucking mental. How anyone can watch us just now and still, if they're generally sitting there in a board meeting today and saying, I still think he can win the league with us, which was his goal, by the way. He even came out and said that. Uh, then they're all just absolutely mental. And here's another thing whilst I'm at it, I mentioned to you in the car. Nobody, we don't know how long his contract is because they've not disclosed that. So um, I think it might be a two year deal, but it's not been confirmed that's anywhere. Weird. Yeah. You know what else is weird? Just while I'm at it, Lewis Martin, longest serving player on Fairmont, been there since he was a kid, 10 years. Um, injured all the last season, signed a new contract this summer, which we didn't find out about for weeks, has been let go. His contract's run out and he's gone, and there's been no communication about it from the club at all. Um, it's just utterly a bizarre. For the top um, it, pff, and the, it's the just, selections baffle me as well. Like obviously, I saw you down at Somerset. Yeah. How Kai Kennedy does not walk into that midfield? Well, let me tell you another thing. Kai Kennedy was fucking abysmal on Saturday. Like just awful for once. Um, but he's been really he's good so far this season. Um, yeah, and it's just once things start going bad, you start to notice everything else that's bad at the club. But it's I like the big effect. Lithuanian centre half. Yeah, he's come in and done quite well actually. We've actually been a bit better at the back recently. He's brilliant. And since he's come back in, he's done quite well. Um, yeah. Uh, but pff, he needs to go to this week and if he doesn't then it's just gonna I don't know the worry for me is that so many people just don't care anymore and crowds are dropping and like it's, that's not nice it's, ho- it's fucking horrible and his successor will be well so this there's so this, this, this numerous options well actually there's not but you can go with like I, I was thinking about it last night you can split it into categories so you can go like safe Realistic and maybe ambitious slash unrealistic. Right, okay. So, ambitious slash unrealistic, I would... I, I'm not even saying I would say this, but I've seen these names put about... Somebody last night said Stephen Robinson. Not going to happen. No. Is he not the Morecambe gaffer? Exactly. Aye. And they're actually... So <laughs> they're that. Expectations. Someone on the film forum last night said him. You know who else was sitting in? Derek McInnes. What? If he's going to rock up to East End Park. <laughs> Powers.net, what have you been smoking? So that, that yeah. falls into ambitious slash unrealistic. Alex Neal was another one that was mentioned. No. And that's just not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Um, I mean, Yogi's one. I would probably take Yogi, Yogi to be honest. Option, I, now, I'd love to see there are a lot of people who would not because I think his reputation has been tarnished by his spell at Wraith Rovers, which is really unfair because they've been a shambles. Um, did a phenomenal job at Ross County last season. Did a phenomenal job at Inverness. Achieves his expectations and exceeds We'll them. get players playing. We'll yeah. get, you know, he might be a good stopgap. Um, ideal for me, John Robertson. Not going to happen though, I don't think. Oh, wonderful yeah, man. Um, Owes, he just owes too much to Inverness after they stood by him. I don't see him leaving. He's got a decent job up there now. I would love the pass to go and headhunt and get him in. I think he'd be brilliant. I just think he would be absolutely brilliant. I'd quite like I that think as well. he was. I said it last season. I thought he was the best manager in the championship, and I'd stand by that if he came back to us. Um, I would love it. Um, and the last one, Stuart Peach at Montrose, club legend, doing well at Montrose. Gamble. And he's also part time, and would he leave part time football? I was going to say exactly that. It's a gamble for him. But if there's a club he was going to do it for, it would be done for Of course. And Dick Campbell is the final option, which won't happen as long as Ross McArthur's there, because Dick Campbell wanted the job and Ross McArthur didn't give him it. So that's not going to happen. Imagine Dick Campbell at the Pars, but. Mate, he, history of the Pars, assistant manager at Bart Payton in the 90s and winning the league. Just a hero. But uh, What a guy. The, the, see, generally, when you look at the manager's market, you're not blessed with options just now. Jim McIntyre's another one. Could you maybe go with uh, Neil McCann? You don't want Jim Neil McCann. McIntyre. Probably won't take it. I mean, but we say that, though. I, I don't, but he won He won the first division last. And that was 10 years ago. He's surely improved since then. But I'm not saying that's where I won. Well, you mean the league cup lost kick as well, manager? Another risk, though, innit? We've done that with Stevie Crawford. Didn't work. Yeah. You've got to get this one right. If Ross MacArthur does sack him this weekend, if he gets this one wrong, he's done. He's got to get this one right. And I, I, actually, I should quantify this by not putting all the blame on Ross MacArthur because obviously the Germans are now in charge and they will have a massive say, as they did with Peter Grant 
uh, into what happens next. But yeah, I don't know who it'll be. If I had to guess who it'll be, a, oh sorry, you know. I, I, I'd probably say Petrie, but I don't know if it'll happen. Neil McCann's an interesting one because he really well at Im- Inverness last season in his wee spell. Mm-hmm. But again, it's another. I gamble, think he's just it? happy doing his media work, isn't he? Yeah, I, I think he's doing something else as well. He's doing some like agent and stuff, or I can't remember. Ah, what he he's is doing. he's an agent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he? Uh, yeah, he opened. An, I think he started an agency company in the summer. Ah, uh, he's an agent. So the, there's been no standout problem, obvious huh? option. I'd take Yogi quite happily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we are. Have you just got an under 20s you it in now? No. But, but we're, we're forming a youth academy at the start of the next calendar year. Mm. Not even an under 20s man. Well, you've got Stephen more. Whitaker and Greg, Greg Shields that are there. Now, if Greg Shields gets the job, I'm going <laughs> to fucking just prove it. I'm going to stand outside with a placard, like the scene still game when the pub gets shot. <laughs> so you pick it, like? Yeah, it, it can't happen, uh, but it would not fucking shock me. Yeah. The, the other thing is, whoever comes in is probably going to have to work with Shields and, and Wits, which is going to be interesting. But Brilliant. Yeah. No, it's not fucking brilliant at all. <laughs> that was incredible. Let's really, uh, mate, let's, uh, the uh, let's really quickly race through the leagues. Um, League One um, has been really the only source of joy for me in Scottish football recently has been watching Falkirk because they've been pish. But they, they did, they, they did I was win. Say, they despite their win at the weekend. They, no, but they haven't been winning much. They did win. Not they true. Beat East Fife just 2 1 to Falkirk. 5 0 and beat ahead against Dumbarton. Mate, um, what the? F- <laughs> Honestly. What is that with Peter Head? Because they're, they're so hot and cold. I really they? don't understand. I don't get that. I know they're maybe coming into a game. They could, they could beat three two the, the week before. Who was it against? It was against a decent but side. But also, so Dumbarton have just won at Falkirk. I know. I know that's why I took Dumbarton on my kitten, mate. I took Dumbarton on my kitten. It finishes five fucking Good nil. Squad Dumbarton two. I mean, I've, yeah. Um, Airdrie two, Clyde one. Um, yeah. Decent result. David Goodwill he scored for Clyde again because that's the, pretty much the only thing that's keeping him going. Two hundred goals now, isn't he? Yeah. David Goodwill. Two hundred. A hundred. A hundred. Yeah, let's just move on. Yeah, well, um, I know. And Alwa Athletic won Cove Rangers 3. We Barry's turning it around a little bit though, isn't he? No, absolutely. We were talking about the way over the card down to 10 men from 60 seconds in, Adam. And, and, and the greatest lower league player of the last... Century. God knows how long. Rory McAllister with a hat Oh, come on. I know. I mean, the goat of the lower league football. Uh, just a phenomenal footballer at that level. How he's never... I mean, I know why, because he's like he's got his own plumbing business and he's yeah, just really yeah, minted in it. Because I think Aberdeen went for him numerous times and he was like, I'm happy at Peterhead. I know he's at Cove now, but what mm-hmm. a player. Um, and he's still And he'll be getting paid well at Cove. His goal scoring oh, record what? over the last 10 years, 15 years, phenomenal. Genuinely phenomenal. Um, a lower league legend. No, oh, the definition of a lower league legend. So 3-1 to Cove. You get there, some, some clubs you see they've scored and you just know who's scored, don't you? And with Cove, it's just McAllister. It's McAllister and Megan's in it. Yeah, I am Megan's in it. Why did they do Queen's Park won Montrose won um, future powers manager stupid no I'm joking um, but yeah and just to quickly go to the league table that was last night wasn't it the Queen's Park game when yes was it was because Thistle were at home on Saturday and they played a oh, final oh of course um, so Queen's Park yeah. is still top of the league Coves win takes them joint um, Falkirk fans are panicking they're only three, four, three points off the top cheer up Falkirk fans it's all good um, that's the only thing that's keeping me going is they are worse than us somehow who's still top the Spiders yes the Spiders still top Cove are in second so, by the way it's my league one shout so Dumbarton are in, <laughs> my league Dumbarton are in fifth on 14 points and Queen's Park are in first on, there's only three points in first and fifth what um, a league it is just phenomenal and Montrose in, in, in sixth and 13 are only four points off the top so yeah great league as per usual and quickly we'll fly through league two um, I'm trying to think if there's any other little stories out with the games to bring up there was one that they spoke about on sports scene uh, Spartans playing the Lowland League against yeah. I think Gretna ball comes into the box and uh, the boy for I think Spartans headers it and you know like, they goals that have got the wheels at the mm-hmm. side that you pop up and wheel yeah, yeah. it hits that and so it goes out of play it comes back in and they score oh. and then a couple minutes later um, the Spartans management have reviewed the footage and they let Gretna score. Oh, I did hear fair that. Corner right oh, that's that's right. To make it 1 0. Yeah, fair play. Like that. Um, Edinburgh City 1, Cowdenbeath 1, Elgin 0, Sterling 2. Sterling are doing quite well, aren't they? Stranraer 1, Albion Rovers 0. Um, Devs raging at that one. Yeah. Uh, Stenny, Is there any Sterling win the league? Stenny 1, 4 for 1. Them. And my new team, Kelly Hearts 2, and Athletic 1. Callum Higginbotham score. <laughs> what I would do if I play, I'll let him back at the party. But Jonas and I'll. No, I'll, I'll, I'll team up by Jonas Wells doing really well. Yeah, Kelly really still flying. Bit of distance at the top now. Four points. Obviously, Sterling 1 as well, which keeps it interesting. But Kelly yeah. are going to run away with the only undefeated team in the league Stirling are very much the yeah, rest yeah, at the they moment are, they though. Are, I think yeah. they're four clear they, they, four, yeah. four behind so yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah everybody yeah, else right, they're yeah. four clear everybody else so right. there's a wee gap opener. another story was in uh, junior football Alton Lake Pollock what a game 3 all. 
Paul down to eight men. Oh, they're always tasty them juniors. Aye, uh, eight men, and apparently a uh, Paul player gets sent off. First red card was. Oh, for, I saw a picture of them all scrapping with it. Aye, uh, uh, the first sending off uh, told a fan to some pleasantries, and they get sent off for it. One of the one of the Pollock players. What happens at that level etiquette is important. Uh, that would have been a good crowd, but Paul and Lockenleck, man. It would have been feisty. That would have been good. I'd like to go to one of the games one day. Yeah, Lockenleck have always been the, the day legends off. of the juniors. Mind when they came to the Tyne Castle. The Real Madrid of the juniors. Mind when they came to Tyne Castle. Like, the goalie was Leishman, that was his name. And he was phenomenal at Tyne Jim Castle. Jim Leishman? It wasn't Jim Leishman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Leish could probably do that still in it. But I remember the goalie was called Leishman and he was phenomenal at Tyne Castle. Went to extra time, if I'm not mistaken. No, we it, snuck a late winner. Right, are, are, yeah. you, are you talking 2012? Because we played them I'm, semi recently. Yeah, as yeah well. I'm talking 2012, though. Because it was not a draw in the first game in 2012, and the replay was at Tynecastle, I'm sure. I'm pretty sure. No, I think we just squeezed past them 1 0. Ah, yeah, mm-hmm. Tynecastle. So but they'd beat Ed in the previous round, I'm and, sure. And it was that d- was more recently. It was down to yeah. down to an offside goal as well. It's not a goal shooting stood. Yeah. That's what you want, but imagine going to a game, eight, a team gets to eight men and three all when fighting Man. and all remember that, that. Remember that game uh, with Neil Warnock, Sheffield United, when the, the match got suspended because they didn't mm. have enough players? <laughs> he just started Fluffy telling them to game. pretend they were injured so they couldn't fucking. <laughs> Good old Warnock, you gotta die for three points. Oh mate, what a man! End on Twitter. Yeah, we've got a few wee questions on Twitter. Twitter questions. I'm guess we've covered them all already. Not Dan Duncan says when are you uh, doing the hydro? <laughs> mate, we'd be lucky to fucking. Which do you think we could sell it? Think we could sell it this room? We should try and sell it at Barrel Land. Put me, if we were to do like some sort of live show, right? Which just we're put not the comment. Gonna do no, we're not going to do, but I'm quite interested. To some hear. lower league ground. What what word could you put in the comments? If you would be up for coming to something like that. Uh, I don't know. Where, where where could we even sell out? Fuck me. I'm trying to think of... Put in the O2. Nearby lower league ground. How big is the O2? Put in the comments O2. Exactly? No, put in Barrowlands in the comments. Barrowlands holds 2,000. Yeah. Aye, put it's in 2000. the comments Barrowlands. Is it 2,000 or 1,200? I can't remember. I think it might be 2,000. Barrowlands is brilliant, isn't it? I love that's it, man. Oh, oh, that's mate. definitely doable. <laughs> Fuck me. We some shift that, wouldn't it? What, what would we do? Did the last show get about a 1,000 views? <laughs> I know. What would we do for the live show? Just Sam Ward up and keep you ups. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, yeah. aye. Nah, it'd be good. Aye, it'd be fucking horrendous. That nah, would be. We'd have to pay people to go. But you were obviously you were the at the hydro for the rotten goal I last was. night, and you said it was brilliant. Didn't you? It was shite. Um, it was shite. No, no but <laughs> seriously, good aye. Ah, it was good. Tommy Gravison, man. What a legend. What what a guy. I love the Gravison stories, man. Oh. What's your favourite Gravison story? Um, Time, Caddy, That's time! Right. When he's talking about going track and taking training, and Gravison's not even training, and there's these traffic cones beside the pitch, and the ball's come over at Paul Caddis. Gravison picks up the traffic cones and goes, Time, Caddy, time! <laughs> or when it, the, the ones where he's talking about going track, he's like, Morning, Gordon! <laughs> oh, brilliant. Yeah, look at us just uh-huh. boosting open goal. Not that they need it. No, exactly. Yeah. Couldn't accuse us of being. Would we be setting behind open goal, would you think? Scottish football? Probably like? not. No? The view from the terrace, isn't it? Who are they? Oh. Oh. No, seriously. That's so anti East Coast, isn't it? Watch and I tell you. Yeah, it is, it is. Somebody else. 100%. That, this is a genuine thing, though. We need to start tapping into the Edinburgh market more. And the, Aberdeen and Dundee. They, they were, we're, in Glasgow, we're doing really well. Aye. But uh, part of that, we're shite. I'll, I'll have to try <laughs> No, I think we've got a few fans for like most clubs, to be fair. But, but in Glasgow, like, if we Aye, were to. It's predominantly. Like, uh, even I get recognised in Glasgow. Mm. But that's not going to happen in Edinburgh. We're just not. We're not tapping. Nah. Who is there? Any hips fans that do like YouTube and that? There isn't really, is there? Hips. Not that I can think of. No, they're all wankers. Oh, <laughs> fucking lovely. Mm. Uh, the views from the Terrace Boys are all Hearts fans anyway. Sked, Fowler, Borthwick, Sked. Yeah. yeah. Where, where's their show? Yeah. YouTube. Telfer's a steady man. Isn't Are they on YouTube? Uh, yeah, mm. uh, no, no, BBC. BBC Scotland. Yeah, yeah, I just think out then, fuck's sake. No, but they, finance. They, they've got a podcast <laughs> as well. He has ten grand. No, they, shows I up. mean, they did build the podcast. Yeah, exactly. The ground, didn't they? They? They build uh, their TV show is brilliant because it focuses on the lower leagues. I'm yet to actually watch the uh, the first episode. I've not watched it. Good. It is good, and uh, the it's one thing they do is really. See, watching the telly is too much effort for me, man. I try to go on YouTube. Yeah, I watch it. I don't really watch much telly, but if it's on, I'll watch. It's always really good. Yeah. Kean says, "What would improve the standard of refereeing more in Scotland? Getting full time referees or introducing VAR? full time referees? Obviously, full time referees that aren't within a fifteen mile vicinity of Glasgow. They don't drink in the Bristol bar. That are like Estonian or something." Yeah. Says you with the six penalties this year, you can't. I know. Well, oh, just, getting just, just, just don't let us enter do the box. Do it's as simple as that. It'd be good if your striker could score more than. 
<laughs> he's literally six missed percent. two. Oh boy, oh boy, <laughs> he's he missed two and six. All he did last season was score penalties, really. I know he is a wee bit of a pen merchant. Do you know Look, hate people that say that? Though? Yes, I'm good to say that. Like that. He's a stat father. He's still got to tuck them away. Aye, and he has. Well. Well, yeah. um, it does get hard when you're getting penalties all the time though. Notice that we have. And two in the same game. I, I hate the fact Stop that Stop giving us penalties. Too many. But, 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 Rangers get four penalties in the one game once. But but why have scored? I don't I just don't like the same player taking it twice. Mm-hmm. It depends how good they are, though. Eh? Oh, it depends. I suppose. Nonsense. I'd, 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 let we, I'd let we. No, but I agree. Full time referees uh, as a way forward. I remember Bobby Madden uh, was doing an interview and he was talking about how uh, he had to do like a 12 hour shift or something in his work and then straight away fucking drive to Pataudry for a night time game did I ever tell you the story about Bobby Madden with Rangers in Aberdeen but I messaged Bobby Madden because he'd been an open goal and then I messaged him to come on here and he said the open goal thing he did was a one time appearance and he wasn't going to be able to, uh, Is that to, right? to do any other media work I've messed him a couple of times next, 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 next week he was back on open goal again <laughs> 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 he was on open goal again next week I was like you are <clears throat> come on me. Bobby don't sorry. Me, Bobby come on I know. just, just say no you don't want to just say no mate <laughs> Genuinely. Just say no. It'd be quite. Do you imagine we had these number, but the noon we just phoned them. What did you think about the Portis challenge or something? We need to get a referee contact for things like that. That's okay. a shame. Do you know any referees? I, I know a guy. But is he? Who it's is it? A fully qualified referee down uh-huh. down in Sunderland studying. Shout out to my man Cammy. Saw you at uh, Haymarket the weekend. That'd be decent, wouldn't it? I think he'd do. Ref watch. So like, what's the sky do about Dermot Gallagher? We'll get him on to that. Ref mm-hmm. watch. Anyway, just finally on referees. Do you remember that weird thing about ten, maybe longer than ten years ago, when the refs were on strike? Anyone remember that? And no. they had to get referees in from foreign countries to ref the games. Were they not Estonian? Is that they why were I had Estonian that and they were, they were from all over the place. <laughs> and they had to get foreign refs in. I think every game, it was only the Premiership that went ahead that weekend because they got enough refs to cover the Prem. But the refs were on strike. That was definitely a thing. Oh, there you go. Yeah. They still get paid handedly, though, you know what I mean? Yeah. Is it on 500 a game or something I for the Prem? I can't remember. But they need, right? to go, they need to go full time. It's a shambles that they're not, to be honest. Something but pretty good. If they were made to go full time, I don't know how many of them would actually just say, well, nah, you're all right. <laughs> there probably would be a few of them that well, that's, wouldn't, wouldn't. To bother. go back to that interview we Maddles, that's what he was saying. They're all, <laughs> they all, they all established in their jobs now. Do you know? If you were, if you were going to make the rest full time, you need guys like Nick, Nick Welsh and that younger yeah. guys that are only already in careers and and would be willing to to go full time. Right, quiz time. That's a short career. Let's do this. It's quiz time. No, we don't have time. Oh fuck off. We don't have time for that. That was too loud. I know, wasn't it? What? Get 100% what? of your claims. G4 claims. 100% of your claims. G4 claims. If you've been hurt in a road... Right, yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> Quiz brought to you by Matthew Duff Enterprises. Out last night and then it, uh, I messaged him. I says, get a quiz, mate. He said, about half 12. He says, I'm out, but there'll be one in your inbox by the morning time. And there was. What a boy. Some boy. I'm glad so he's not in my inbox. Him. Who's going first? Adam can choose. I'll go first. Ooh. Gladiator. Oh, is, is that is a good call. How is that working? Huh? There shouldn't be a good call. Uh, that is a good call. Excellent. Fuck off. For one of the questions anyway. That's a hearts question, isn't it? <laughs> no. <laughs> It's like the last How many question. penalties have Hearts received this well, season? We, what we do sometimes is we'll have a we'll have we'll do a segment on a show on something, and then there'll be a question about that segment. Aye. That happens a lot because we just cover it. We do, which is superb. Aye. Right, Adam. How many Scottish players started for Rangers against Tabernian on Sunday? Jesus. Talk us through your thinking, mate. That is a podcast. Keeper Patterson, Scott Wright. Should be somebody else. Is there? I'm going three. And that's correct. Yeah. One who, who else do you think it was? Points in the board. I don't know, I just felt like there was somebody yeah. else. Three. Right, David, your mm-hmm. first question. Scotland are due to face Israel on Saturday, but how many times have the two nations oh, already oh. faced in the past three years? Delighted if I've this week. question. I, I think doubt about a, a fixture for Scotland is as you want it. Hate each other. Yes, Israel. Right, hold on a minute here. Yeah. Let's think about this. It's turned into like the taste of Derby in it or something. <laughs> as in Israel. What are you thinking, David? Has been so some great games between the sides. Nations League Stankers. under Alex McLeish, um, where we played them away and got beat, and then we beat them at home and James Forrest got a hat trick. Then there was the playoff, um, which we won, obviously, on penalties. And then we had them again in the. Did we have them again in the Nations League, the next Nations League campaign? Oh, yeah, fuck it, that's killing me. With Slovenia, Slovakia. 
I found out Israel. We played Slovenia. <laughs> so hold on, that'd be one, two, three, four. Because then we played them in the start of this World Cup campaign and got beat. No, we drew we drew one each. Ryan Fraser scored. So that's four times. Now I just can't remember if we played them in the other Nations League campaign. I feel like four is not enough. Ooh. I feel like four is not enough. I feel like it's more than four. Um, this is dead. Because uh, we definitely played Slovenia and Slovakia after. Surely there's got to be a time limit no, on no, these questions. There's, there's, there's a lot no, more difficult matches. This is house. entertaining. Is, we, played them, we played Slovenia and Slovakia. I do quite like seeing the working after, to after Israel in the playoff to get to the Serbia game, we played Slovenia and Slovakia. We beat them both at home, I think. 1 0. Dyke scored in one, and Ryan Fraser scored in the other, which I think is what happened. Um, but I, I can't remember if that Nations League group was just three teams or four, because if it was three teams, then we didn't play them. I'm going to say we played them four times in the last three years. Wrong. Six. Fuck off! <laughs> oh, I should have just gambled. Yep. One, two, drew two, lost two. I fucking knew. Wow. It was either four or six. You got the four in against there. So we did play them in the other Nations League. We played them every other week. Uh, seventh coming up on Saturday. Got to stop that Ali Dasa from Pocket and Robo, I tell you. I know, they have to get some good players. Yeah, he loves it. Big <laughs> Salomon, Zahavi. Zahavi, and Zahavi, aye. Zahavi, 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 Zahavi,
Christ, I don't know what happened this season, wouldn't it? But I don't have a clue. Um, he doesn't know either, so that's good. <laughs> I knew this one straight away. Did you? Aye. Was it earlier this season? Because it must have been this season. Um, and uh, but I, I can't remember who have they played. Oh, I know it. Oh fuck! Who have they played recently? You've got to capitalise here, David. Give me the team. Come on, give me the team. No, oh. no, I can't give you the team. Mate. Was it this season? Maybe, maybe not. Aye, it was this like season. Aye, it was this season. It's up to you, Adam. No, we're not giving him anything. Right, okay. No, I've not had any clues. Right, that's fine. Um, did I not help him with one of the questions with my thinking out loud? I think I did, but... Uh, I but then he went Baldi anyway. <laughs> I know, you got it wrong anyway. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't have a clue. I'd be guessing. Just I'd, have a guess. I, I can't even think of the... I mean, no, because I don't, I don't even... You're going to kick yourself. Jamie McCart. Jamie McCart. Oh, fuck. The controversial was, was like, one. Yeah, it was like two weeks ago, wasn't it? Was it was literally like the other week, aye. Yeah. Thank right, God to for take that. the lead, Adam. That, that was a gift. Your final question, mate. Yes, sir. And as I say, this might come back to haunt you with the last question for yourself. Which former Scottish Premiership team holds the record for the most consecutive games in one season without scoring a goal? <laughs> um, so it's a former Scottish Premiership team. That's the question. Mm. Jesus Christ. Might That's be, a great question, yeah, by the way. Yeah, it might be Tom you know. My automatic was Aberdeen, but they're not a former Premiership team. <laughs> Maybe. Next year. Have this club since rebranded. Oh, what the fuck? You sell the fuck down here. <laughs> Again, this isn't a fucking interrogation, oh, mate. Just, just answer, answer the question. Answer the question. Because I've got great now in my head. This is the longest show ever, by the way. Like, come on. I know. Who'd have been mince? I'll go Gretna. I don't know. I'm wrong. You want to hazard, I guess. Was it Dunfermline? Yes. It was Dunfermline, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My God. Nine games without a goal in the 2006-2007 season. Oh, what was that season? I thought it was 2012. Okay, that would have been the perfect wind That's what Aberdeen went as well, though. It was nine Six, games. Seven. But obviously, they're still in the league. 6-7 was my first season really once in the past two. Right, to win it. Wow. You know, my first Dunfermline game I can remember was against Hearts at East End Park in the opening day of that season. And the only thing I can remember was Stephen Presley getting halfed and flying into the wall at North West End. Anyway, we move. To win it, but I'd be real impressed if you get this. Uh, why? Wow, Matthew Duff just hates So me. impressed. Because I don't like Stephen Welsh. That's why you Can not find themselves in the Scottish Championship this they season? Do indeed. But what season was the last time? Sorry, but what season was the last time they were in the division? Two thousand and one, two. Just jumping straight in. Yeah, I don't have a clue. I'm guessing. Not back to the nineties. You want to hazard a guess? They won the cup in the nineties. Ninety two, so ninety three. <laughs> That was it, eh? 92, 93. Good job, it counts for nothing. I know. So, we go to the tiebreaker. How did you do that? Just a guess. Yeah. Just a guess. Just a guess. I, I, did they not I'm, win I'm, the cup in the early I'm 90s? I'm fairly certain I heard that 90s. it was 29 years. So then a heart. Okay. So, so who, goes, who goes first here with us? Um, well, Adam went first, so he can go first with us as well. Since he chose to go first. Right. Adam and David. Tense. Scotland star, Scott... Mick Tominay lined up alongside Cristiano Ronaldo in the Champions League last week to face Villarreal in a 2-1 victory. But what was his pass percentage? Scott Scott McTominay's pass percentage versus Villarreal in the Champions League. He loves the Tottenham army. He turned the English down. Scott McTominay. I love him. Great question. Does Dave. it start versus Israel? No. No, probably no, not. We'll get into that anyway in the last show. Percentage. You better not, Give me Steve. your thinking, mate. If you're Give watching, me your thinking. Steve, you better not start. I'm thinking most of these passes, not trying to be disrespectful here, are backwards, sideways. Can I give you some thinking time? Steve Clark will shit it and start him, and he'll drop Billy Gilmore any fucking money. Fuck off. He will. You watch. It'll be McGregor, it'll be McGregor, McTominay, McTominay. Do you know McGregor, the good thing about McGregor. it is he's got a week to work on it? Be, I'll be even more fuming if he drops Jack Hendry. Hanley is out, remember that. But I don't want Hendry. Can you move Hendry in the middle? No, I don't no. want I want Hendry where he is. He plays in a two of the new at Bruges. I, probably, I, probably I know, but, but I, I just, I don't trust him enough in the middle of a back three. But you trust him against Messi, Neymar and Mbappe, but no, in the middle of the back three. Not for Scotland. <laughs> nah, no. nah. We'll I get in it anyway. We'll get in it anyway. He's not a club Bruges fanatic, that's the difference. 86. 86% possession. 92. <laughs> One has got it right. But who was it? Him. The winner is Sir David Pierce. Yes! Come on! Sorry. Sorry headphone All headphone users. users. 
Ninety-two percent was the correct answer. How the hell did you know that? Because it's going to be high in it. You, you literally he plays safe passes. You, say, you gave him his answer. He plays safe passes. Eighty-six sideways and backwards. I'm telling me away. I'd still expect he a made couple forty giveaways. accurate passes and misplaced only three passes. But it is crazy just to think about. I just said there that a guy who's playing Champions League football for United shouldn't start for Scotland. That's how far we've come in recent times. That is good. We've come a long way from Barry Bannon and fucking no. I like Barry Bannon. I shouldn't slag him. I like Barry Bannon. I know, but if you want to go to that next yeah, yeah, level, yeah. he's no your man in the middle of the park. But it, is it? just no. quick, before we come to that show, we'll do it. Uh, who's even on that? You won't be on that show, will you? Because no, no, me, so. it'll be me and Kieran probably. Yeah, and maybe McGinley. Um, what, would you, what would your starting eleven be for Israel? So Gordon's a goal. Gordon and goal. Who's your right wing back? O'Donnell or Patterson? I was not impressed with Stephen O'Donnell at the weekend, I've got to say. Were you that impressed with Nathan Patterson yesterday? Because I don't think I Put the delivery in, but other than that, never had a great game. No. Well, this is the thing. This has obviously been the highlighted problem area, so... Right, we're trying to wrap the show I, up, I, but I'm going to I'm, figure it out. I'm going Patterson. Right, OK. I just think he's better. Centre-halves. Centre-halves. Hendry. Hendry on the right. Who's in the middle? Surely Liam Cooper in it. He's got to be Cooper. Out. No? Co- yeah, I think so. Cooper, Cooper Tierney, so. Robertson... Then across the middle, picks itself on me. I think it picks itself too. What, Gilmore, McGregor, and McGinn? For and, me. And McGinn supporting Adams yeah. and Dykes. Yeah. Do you think uh, Adams is a sell? Yeah, definitely. No, but for your team, if you were picking your team, mm. are you putting Adams or, and Dykes in? Or yeah, are you no, going Nisbet I'm, and Dykes? No, I'm going, I'm going Nisbet and, and Adams. Oh. I would go Nisbet and Dykes. <sighs> but Arsenal and Dykes. I think Dykes is the best cycle we've got. Did you see yeah. Dykes at the weekend? Put it in the Twitter account. But he was brilliant at the tail end last season. He didn't do anything in the Euros. And he was probably his He's good against England. Uh, yeah, maybe. But he's hopeless. I think, it, <laughs> I think he started goals. the season pretty well. But he ended the season See, the thing, the, thing I, the way I look at it is, out of the three, if you want a chance to fall to one of them, for me it's Nisbet. Yeah, it's Kevin Nisbet, isn't it? Yeah, I think so too. See, Adam Fair works comment. really good and I think he's, he's, he's a good player. But we've got but three. Finishing-wise. We've generally got three good options, whereas... Uh, when Steve Clark came in, we didn't have any good options. Stephen Naismith was our only striker. Mm-hmm. Ollie Burke. Uh, generally, we had Stephen Naismith and Ollie Burke. And, and he was Dana Jones still. <laughs> like, how far away is Ollie Burney from the national team there? Thank wow. Christ. But generally, he was starting loads of games under that McLeish. That's how far we've come. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for that game. Can't wait to do it. I'll be sure talking about it. I've got a ticket. I'm going. Cannot wait. Packed Hamden Park. Going to be superb. Um, last time Hamden was actually full for a Scotland game was probably the England game but even then it wasn't going to have as many Scotland fans as it will do for this game because there's yeah. no away support which is going to be great um, yeah really excited looking forward to it Same. win please win, win at win. all costs just win thanks for watching people see you again next one